Hello, this is Dr. Alexander Kozhanov, and uh, we are continuing the magnetism and magnetic materials course uh, with the uh, with a um, series of video lectures. So this is physics 47.20, and uh, magnetism and magnetic materials, and uh, we will start this first video it would be a recap video as uh, i always start every lecture we uh, review what we briefly review what we've done so far so um let's start uh what we learned in the first lectures so it's a brief recap first we learned about h field and b field you actually learned about that in the previous courses, but we reviewed that. We learned how you would generate fields, you read how you would detect magnetic fields, different types of coils, corresponding magnetic moment. And uh, then we talked about magnetic materials. We talked about magnetic moment in the material, about magnetization of the material, which is magnetic moment of uh, the volume um, and actually for magnetization, yes. Uh, then we talked about uh, magnetic permeability, susceptibility, and how they are related. And the uh, important part that you used to write your test was this, uh, you know, permeability of the free space H plus M, both are vectors. Uh, so that was enough for the first lecture, first uh, part of the course, and you wrote the qualifier. Oh, sorry, you wrote the midterm exam. <laughs> <coughs> they, uh, then we moved on to discussing where this magnetic moment uh, comes in the material. And uh, a third part was uh, the discussion of electronic structure. So we discussed L, S, J, uh, and how those contribute for multi-electron atoms, how those contribute to a uh, magnetic moment. And the important part was that we were able to uh, calculate this for different elements, but the important part is that uh, iron, for example, it can be in two plus state, but also it can be in three plus state or other states dependent on the material uh, it's um, uh, forming. So, uh, dependent on the material, we would have different electron configurations resulting in different quantum numbers and different uh, um, angle orbital momentums and different spins and different total orbital moments and uh, therefore resulting in different magnetization of the material and magnetic properties. <coughs> so, uh, but uh, magnetic moment of individual atoms uh, is not enough to define their properties. We discussed there are different types of materials. So if you plot magnetization as a function of a magnetic field, uh, there can be uh, diamagnets, there can be paramagnets, there can be ferromagnets and other types. We did discuss some of those. And uh, although, for example, if J is equal to zero, there is only one possibility. It's a diamagnet. And diamagnets are materials that do not exhibit magnetic properties. But for uh, J non equal zero, there are different options there. And it really depends on how these magnetic materials interact with each other. So we looked at uh, interactions between two dipoles. Let's say if you have two dipoles and they interact somehow. What we learned before, from before even taking this course, that this interaction uh, uh, dipole these are magnetic dipoles, so standard dipole-dipole interaction uh, cannot provide sufficient sufficient uh, strength of interaction. It cannot produce the magnetic ordering. And where we learn it from? We studied paramagnets. This is P. Paramagnets, and for paramagnets, a susceptibility, um, we can write it down in Curie-Weiss law. 
and uh, if you look at this this is a curry temperature theta t chi and it's inversely proportional but it goes up at curry temperature so if you uh, calculate the energy required this is Boltzmann energy required to break the ordering so above this temperature we have paramagnet with a thermally fluctuating magnetic moments below that we have ferromagnet with an ordered state or it might be something else depends on the material but when you raise the temperature at this at curry temperature the ordering magnetic ordering breaks and spins or magnetic moments they start to randomly fluctuate and that results in this decrease in the magnetic susceptibility so if you calculate that energy it turns out that dipole dipole interaction is not big enough to uh it's not producing high enough uh, magnetic fields uh, equivalent magnetic fields so therefore uh we had to be started we learned about new quantum mechanical uh interaction which is called exchange interaction so that was the last lecture before the break and exchange interaction energy was proportional to j this j is different from this j this is total angular magnetic uh, total um, angular momentum and this is j it's exchange constant um, s i s j so if you have two interacting spins that's what we have s i s j so j is a constant that defines the interaction between magnetic moments now if we plot i'll make a break here if we plot um value of j as a function of uh, interatomic distance and we'll take ratio to the 3d to the typical dimension of the 3d orbital so when we bring atoms closer together it turns out that this j it goes up first and then goes down so this is our zero so here it is greater than zero it's less than zero um and it turns out for j greater than zero it is ferromagnetic ordering for j less than zero it's anti-ferromagnetic ordering and if you look at the different materials obviously when you go from one material to another uh then uh we would um um, we would uh, have uh, different atomic diameters and we would have different um, uh, values of J so if we start uh, to go over this so uh, somewhere here we'll have chromium somewhere here uh, we'll have manganese then if you go to iron it is here iron then somewhere here would be cobalt and here would be nickel and you can see that iron has the strongest ferromagnetic interaction here manganese and chromium chromium has a strong uh, anti-ferromagnetic interaction so r is basically our atomic radius and uh, r3d is the radius of the the average radius of the 3d shell okay so this curve has a name so it's uh beth slater curve and uh, looking at it you can clearly see the interactions and um, uh, you can see that while both iron cobalt and actual manganese and chromium they possess magnetic moments so uh, they they have uh, j non-zero which means that they have magnetic moment that is non-zero but still uh, the arranging of these elements in the crystal lattice bringing them close together would define how they interact and that defines that we'll have very strong interaction for iron let's say and chromium but the type of interaction would be different because they have different atomic radius
And uh, it is the same for other uh, elements. Now, uh, this uh, defines basically the what type of magnetic element, what type of magnetic material we will have. But it turns out that magnetic properties of uh, materials do not solely depend on uh, what type of material we have and how it is arranged. There are other um, factors. For example, if you will make our material in form of a circle, or if you'll make a, a thin film out of it, or we'll make a wire, uh, we'll have completely different magnetic properties, and we already discussed in demagnetization, if you remember, there is certain demagnetizing fields associated with different shapes. So that would be the main topic of the uh, next video. So we will talk about inosotropy. Inosotropy. Okay. That is, this is the end of the first video. And see you in the next video, or hear you in the next video.